Hey there, welcome to the tutorial on the transactional email, a very exciting new feature. So I'm going to show you how it works and how you can get started. I'm just going to create a new campaign. In this case, I'm just going to call it out test. And once the campaign is created, we are going to go over to the campaign step. And here you will see that you have the marketing to send broadcast campaigns transactional and templates. Let's get started on the template section. Here you probably already have a template already created. So in this case, you can customize, change the title, change the content, as well as what is the from domain, from name, and many more information right here. Once you're done with this, this is kind of like your baseline or a default template that you can reuse both in your marketing campaigns as well as in the transactional campaigns. So now we are going to create a new transactional campaign, in this case, a new transactional message. A transactional message happens when you want to send one-time communication to your customers. For example, you complete a purchase, you want to reset a password, you want to say a welcome to your new sign-up, and many more things such as uh, automations when it comes to different flows. In this case, we are going to create a new uh, password reset uh, template. Here is the name. Um, so this is a unique name. And the whole point of this is just make sure to use a unique uh, a name that is unique. And also it's very uh, easy to read and to understand. This is very useful for both you, the marketer, as well as you, the developer. And this name has to be unique. So you cannot have uh, two transactional uh, messages with the same name. Now we are going to create a new template. In this case, you can actually start like with uh, duplicating one of these templates, or you can create a brand new template right into the dashboard. In this case, I'm going to select this one as the baseline. And what's going to happen is it's going to duplicate the template. And here, let's add some internal description so your teammates and your colleagues will know and understand what is this email purpose. In this case, this email is for resetting an account password. Uh, here are advanced settings. So if there are mission critical emails, such as a password reset, you don't definitely want to track email opens or email uh, link clicks. That's because these two things here may affect your email deliverability. For most of the emails, it's okay to enable them, but for mission critical emails, I would disable them. If you're, for example, sending a welcome email, it's totally fair and safe to enable them, but this is something to, to keep on the back of your mind. And you can always test this out and see if you have better conversions or lower conversions. Now let's go ahead and create a transactional email. Oh, so actually the password reset exists. So let's go ahead and create the transactional email. Now let's open the transactional email. As you can tell here, we just duplicated the email template. Actually, if I open the email template right now and start modifying, it only will affect the transactional email, which is a very good and easy way to make changes to your transactional email without affecting any other template. In this case, let's add some variables to customize the transactional email. For example, we can say, I want to customize this URL that is going to be maybe a password research URL where we pass the token to reset the password of the user. Also, we can pass certain things like a first name, last name, or anything else that we may want. There are certain variables that are default on SuTools, such as a first name, but then you can define as many variables as you want. For example, you can say and be like, your favorite food is, and put a variable called favorite food. Again, there's no limitations and you can create as many variables as you want. And the only requirement is that you open and add to curly braces, the variable name and close it by with the two curly braces. So once we click here on saved, now we are going to go back to the template 
um, we will see that certain things has changed a little bit. So let's go here. And if we go to the code examples, so this is what you have to send to your developer or if you are a developer, this is what you have to copy paste. You will see that um, the API to trigger this email, to send an email, is really, really simple. So first we pass a name. In this case, research account password. As you can tell, it's so self-descriptive and very easy to understand. In the second line, here is a two. This is basically the email address of the customer that you want to send an email. In case you don't have any customer with this email on your Sutils database, we're gonna create a new member for you automatically. And the last part here is the data. This is all the information that your developer can pass. So anytime that we send the email, we will replace the template with these variables. In this case, first name will be replaced by John, favorite food by add your value here, and URL add your value here. Obviously, these are examples. So this is pretty much it. Um, if you want to live check this, um, there is a very simple test your email um, widget. So this is pretty similar as the API, but it's more so like something very easy and very user friendly. So you can say, hey, what's your first name, John? Where's your favorite food, pizza? And what is the research password URL? We're just going to add a very fake URL. So for example, we're going to say reset password.com token equals blah, 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 blah. So this is basically what your developer will pass when calling the API. And now we can actually send a test email to ferredo.me at gmail.com so we can see how the template is being updated with these values. Let's send the test email. Nice. Give me a second and I will open the inbox. Yay, I've just got my beautiful uh, email and as you can tell, hey, John, so we replace the first name. Your favorite food is pizza. And now, is, is, if you remember, we actually replace this button with an actual URL. If I click there, we'll go to resetpassword.com and token 213, etc. Something else to mention is we only use variables for the content of the email, but you can also use variables for the subject line as well. Awesome. So this is it. I hope it's very clear and very easy. As you can saw, it took us like less than two minutes to actually create a new transactional email and trigger the API. And the really good thing is there are many different instructions here for different languages such as JavaScript, Python, Ruby, Go or Curl. This is actually probably the simplest and the easiest way to actually get started just triggering a a curl request. And something else to uh, remember and make sure is you will need an API token from Zootools. If you haven't had any API token just yet, just please uh, go to your dashboard, go to settings, and here under API token, click on ask early access. Soon we are going to be adding an option in the dashboard to create API tokens automatically, but for now the process is manual. Here are some bonus that are going to be very useful while you implement this as well as you keep doing changes. As you saw before, we have three variables in the template, first name, favorite food and URL. Now, if we actually modify and add one more variable to the template, let's say to the subject line. Let's say happy birthday and we save changes. Now, if we go back here, you will see that there is a new variable here. What you gotta make sure anytime that you do changes to the template and you add new variables to coordinate to your developer to make sure that uh, they are able to pass any new variables in the payload. In the future, we may raise an error if there are certain variables that are not being defined. Especially useful because if you don't pass a value to those particular things, 
the email will not look right. So for example, if you don't provide the value, you will end up having an email in this way where it's like happy eighth birthday. However, if you actually pass a number, it's gonna look like this. So just make sure to coordinate with your developer anytime that you do changes. Lastly, if your developer wants to try it out things, we definitely recommend and encourage to use Postman. It's a very simple API testing platform and you can get started really easy. For example, here we're calling the V1 messages API and I can actually trigger, in this case, just one test with my email and the data. If I click send, you have to see a response. Our API is blazing fast because we just make sure to not have many logic there and just processes, uh, processing everything on the background. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Hope you find this useful. If you have any questions, reach out. And yeah, can't wait to see you what you're sending with the transactional API. Ciao!